name is Raja. And uh, <coughs> I call myself a data architect. I've been a data architect for quite some time, probably for close to 25 years or so. And the reason I call myself a data architect is that I'm interested in architecting data systems. It is like when you build a skyscraper or a small hut or a dam or a geodome or anything like that, you need an architect to build it properly. And uh, I'm in that particular field in building it. Um, and it is a great time to be a data architect uh, because a lot of things are happening. Uh, big data. A lot of data is being collected, digital data, sensor data, uh, a lot of it is being collected. So obviously a data architect needs a lot of data, so that's a good thing to have. The second thing is that a lot of new models and methodologies and algorithms are, are coming out. Uh, different types of things, distributed algorithms, uh, social metric network algorithms, and relevance algorithms, and so on and so forth, which makes it really a good thing to pull this data together with these algorithms and, and do new things. And the third thing which is happening is that we are having very cheap hardware and a lot of small devices like your iPhones and your pads and, uh, and uh, the, the visualization things like the Oculus and stuff like that. A lot of new devices and gadgets are coming up and pulling them together is also really difficult. So you can see why a data architect now is a really happy person because all these things are converging and this convergence is making it very hard to deal with. In so there's a social aspect, there's a technical aspect, there's an algorithmic aspect, and all these things are converging together. And in a sense, this has been um, uh, looked at earlier, uh, maybe around 10, 15 years back, when uh, Jim Gray talked about the fourth paradigm. He said the data is changing the way we are going to do things. It is going to take us away from the normal, observe, hypothesize, and test type of uh, uh, paradigm to something which is completely data mind paradigm. So you can do data mining and get your theory rather than trying to do it by doing some model. Okay. So that is the type of thing which is happening and I'm in the middle of that type of thing and, and try to work in, in that particular area. Uh, and actually uh, we recently wrote a, a proposal for basically that type of fourth paradigm systems, how we can do the fourth paradigm systems for scientists and engineers. Okay. Having said that, what are the different types of things I've been working on? Uh, I've been working on, you can see that, the IDOTS <laughs> is a large-scale system. Basically, I'm interested in policies. What are the different type of policies which govern data? How do they move around? How do we share? How do we keep them for long periods of time, like, like Charles said? What are the type of things I need to do? What I can talk about semantic integration of data. How can I deal with data in, in different ways? Where can they live and how they can prosper? And that is what the IROC system basically does. And we had an um, NSF funded project called the Data Net Federation Consortium, which basically did that. And I'm also interested in discovery, data discovery. I think a lot of us are really interested in that. But I'm interested in a slightly different type of data discovery. I'm interested in scientific data discovery, where data doesn't talk. Okay, there is no other information. It is a bits and bytes and numbers and things like that. Or, and how do I use them to do that. Um, remember, before Facebook was there, how did you know about your friends? Now you probably have your high school friends and maybe elementary school friends that you have friended with them. Before Facebook, how did you do that? And there is nothing like that for here. Can one people in Australia find a similar data in Alaska and become friends together? That is the type of discovery I'm looking at. We, we built a system called Data Bridge for doing something exactly like and I'm also uh, interested in applying these type of techniques to large-scale systems. For example, I'm interested in what is called smart cities and smart campuses and electric communities. Um, and I'm also interested in, uh, uh, like uh, uh, Gary talked about, in exposomics, where the nexus of health information and health, environment, and data all come together. How, how they are going to change the data. Genomics talk about how things are there, how we can grow up, and things like that. But the exposome, or the environment, is going to be defined how we are going to um, play around for the next 70, 60, 80 years in our life. Similarly, we need to find out how the exposome is going to be helpful. The, ex the exposure is going to deal with it, and data is really important. So in a sense, I'm, I'm in the, in working in the nexus of socio-technical information and algorithmic aspects, and trying to build systems that make sense 